Prelude by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Herein is writ fulfillment of the law, stars still at night and roses during day. God made the world and men and all live things, and God put wisdom in the silent stars and beauty in the roses. So God took the breath of four fair roses and the mist of four bright stars and put them in a cup made of eternity and beaten gold brewing a potent potion of the two of which he said a drop upon the eyes of certain men and they shall walk about among all men and they alone shall see deep in the hidden heart of all live things whereof are men and trees and night and day likewise a drop of this upon the ears of these and unto them alone shall be revealed the symphony that all live things whereof our skies and seas and smiles and tears join in and these few shall be beautiful so they shall find them means whereby to tell of this they know unto all other men this i shall not replenish so that when the cup is empty i shall breathe and make another world new roses and new stars the world is young yet and the golden cup has yielded but a little of its store saving enough for unborn men to come like violets in all earth's meadowland and yet the world is old and there have been full many men upon it beautiful who seeing in their heart of old live things and hearing that wild symphony have seen happiness clasped with sorrow and have heard pleasure that sings in company with pain and of the brethren of the golden cup some have been known abroad and famed and some have taken lowlier ways in loneliness speaking perforce but finding among men no ear to listen happy still to know their kinship with the roses and the stars herein is writ fulfilment of the law stars still at night and roses during day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Theodora by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. So now thou comest, Lord, perchance to gloat on this accomplishment of thine, as when thy gilded lance accosteth hearts whose frail intent is of cool forest, sun a glance through leaves and flowers to enhance the crimson violet or a dance on wooded streams of light content look now hath ere so fair a hand lain close around the goblet's gold a hemlock grown in distant land hath yielded up what sages sold this potion viperous thy wand i made bait slaves to understand and bring me this and here i stand to die thy queen but overbold for that i gave my lips to thee my heart was shent of warmth being thine and it was dire asymmetry to kiss a dream and make it mine hath timotheus come to me lord lord there have been more than he perchance i die so let it be as sharp as sweets the eglantine nay lord i see thy angering be not enraged the fault was when may happiness had bade me sing that april time for it was then thou first didst see me and didst bring me to byzantium thou a king and now i've done this scarlet thing and made thee crimson before men perchance dost thou remember now that day yet nay thou hast forgot i lay a-dreaming sang of how i loved my love thou knew him not my love clean-limbed of lofty brow a beggar would suffice enow a slave could he a heart endow nor wealth nor but the humblest scot and then along the dusty road i saw though scarcely move my head where armoured men their steeds bestrode a band of princes garlanded with victory's fruits my kinsmen sowed before they came and overrode our lydia thou wast their goad arrayed in safety and in red thy queen was then a simple maid who knew but sixteen years no more who looked upon thee unafraid unwitting of the wealth she bore the gold within her golden braid the jewel of her eyes soft jade she knew not in the pledge she made thy queen would once become thy whore 
So simple was thy queen, my lord, she only dreamed of double bed. She ne'er had viewed a gleaming sword, nor looked on men so favoured. And thou their leader madest word of queenly graces to be poured, would she but follow? Good, my lord, how could she know thy heart was dead? So came the marriages and the feast of delicacies, curious rare. Thou hadst not wearied of my breast, nor of my lips, nor of my hair. And every prince that was our guest did homage me at thy request. For thee my kiss, for me thy best, Byzantium's best, the bargain's fair. My lord, I made a goodly queen, while I was loved and loved my life. And potent princess thou hast seen, to kiss my hand, forgetting strife. Full half thy sway in kingdoms green of land and meadows intervene, to cry at thee what aid I've been, but I am not a duteous wife. Thou knowest still I might be love of thee alone, hadst thou loved me, that passion in me hath but moved when ages chilling moved in thee. Look, here's my robe, the hem thereof I take, white Aphrodite's dove. Look, here's my body, did it prove? Thy cheeks one blush, such thing to see. Nay, Lord, love is a passing thing, and love in thee hath passed and sung, and thou wouldst have no sweetest string, my heart's soft lyre thou hast unstrung. No lips unto my lips to cling, no breast upon me quivering, no solace in my sorrowing, for love's own pinion swift outflung. In sooth had I my dignity, thou sayest, and my virtues white. Lord, canst thou say for chastity, thyself hath barred thyself at night? Hast known no woman saving me? Lord, I have come a maid to thee, a woman now eternally, forbidden further, do delight. Sweet Timotheus, who is dead, for that he found the eager way, soft affront to my heart, and said, What fair thing thou couldst never say! I love thee, had upon thy head an empire no design, Misled, we deemed it through thy lifeblood's red, To find one unendangered may. Sweet Timotheus of my heart, Good Lord, my Lord, I love him still, And sooth have no desire apart, To live a life unbearable. Nay, Lord, this draughts a pleasant start, Of life anew in death to part, No more, with untasted art, Of kiss returned and loving's fill. Yet stay a while, my Lord, with me, Though rage thy pale cheek doth inflame, The virgin blazing sun to see, Set slowly to a glorious shame, Preceding death immediately, After a day's white chastity. Therein dost mark analogy? Like shame is mine, not mine the blame. Hard nature gave the sun its heat, And placed it in the heavens aright, Yet doomed it after sunset sweet, To perish for the hooded night. And thou hast made a maid complete, With woman's quicker pulses beat, Yet destined hemlock to defeat, Satiety of her delight. Of whom the evil then, that I, Have found death's love concomitant? Lord, Lord, a woman ear must die, Within this world till God supplant, The law of lust and prurient lie, Man-made by men beneath the sky, That giveth men divinity, And women death through sordid cant. What, Lord, thou wouldst depart from me, that vilified Byzantium's name? Nay, stay and watch how merrily I quaff thy vengeance goblet's flame. Thy queen of stained chastity hath proven true woman she may be, who rose above hypocrisy, triumphant in her damned shame. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gyneolatry by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Love thou the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy body's might. God saith, and the Christ of pale delight, and ghost that is their jealous counterpart. The candles dim, and in all reason's art, I find no succour in my stark affright, of conscience cold within the haunted night, of fingered phantoms banefully astart. The days conceived in pregnant nature's womb, the prophet cock doth cry harsh heraldry of travail that the shrieking owl doth see on high, where day's birth doth dispel the gloom, and pallid night is laid within her tomb. 
and all the hours are pacing weightily in slow parade and each devises me insistent thought of her about this room sure goth had seen her seated in this chair jehovah that is mighty and is fierce day apprending dusk at mellow tears and surely goth had noted she was fair dear lord there were sweet blossoms in her hair and thou omniscient that mayest pierce all hearts in her heart thou hast seen the tears unborn awaiting sorrow or despair dear god i cannot drive her gentle thought from me though at thy knee sat suppliant my heart within her memory doth pant and of her loveliness i am distraught each night wind's breathing unto me had brought soft perfume of her presence as a plant of roses near and thou art adamant of love and i would pray and may say naught perchance thou seest what i cannot see because i am but mortal yet may know how soft she slumbereth where breezes go her window through an elfin venery and wanton o'er her nescient chastity nor hath her timorous pulses ebb and flow lord god she loveth me who am below and strife that i may love thee properly lord christ it was the springtime of my life and all the wood afloat with even song bird throated and the path i trod along with scarlet roses reverently rife first time i saw her queen of lissom strife for favour in her hair light winds among and every jasmine blushed to think her wrong she dreameth now of me and is my wife love thou the lord thy god with all thy heart nay lord my heart is where the heart doth move unwitting in soft dreaming of our love with open lips of flush where kisses start and hath but hollow grievings that impart this poignant terror and because thereof my soul doth gaze stare-eyed at night above and winceth with thy objurgation smart there doth she stand at advent of the night awaiting thee where fares the view afield nor by thick lilac tree thou art concealed so saith memory and is not contrite there doth she stand and singeth she aright of love's soft answer by a flush revealed so fair when to fatigue thyself would yield thou knowest i cannot love thee as i might harsh god of grim impossibilities a stranger in thy dim serenity can thy remote affections ever be more sweet than is her tenderness's peace heaven were a sorry place of little ease were she not dare to sing thy songs to me thy paradise a pale infinity of loneliness did she not bring surcease lo i was thy humblest penitent that kissed thy precious body's blood and said the loving words thy peter ordered and went my pious way incontinent lo i that have thy devotees intent of kindly deeds from sin dissevered forsake thy supper for her lips more red and seek within her heart my heart's content lord save me for i perish thou hast heard the cry upon that great tumultuous lake and i am smitten with a desperate ache of icy waters conscience tempest stirred and i am living though in tomb interred and famishing and i may not partake of sustenance lord pity me and slake my anguish with a word dear god one word and there's the dawn and like a babe a creep upon the soft maternal lap of earth and like a lusty babe a will at birth the plaintive birds unknowingly do cheep so like a father that hath wandered deep in momentary hell of poignant mirth soul seared for all the mother's woman worth now warily may i encounter sleep he sleepeth day declineth unto death night's gentle footfall scattereth the dusk as dust is scattered on a country way and when the first stars out he waketh then again returneth to the anguished room and taketh his fair lady to his kiss and leadeth her and kneeling both upright he speaketh thus lord god jehovah of the loving heart i see thy divine wisdom in the trees that in the ministry of every breeze are wedded sacredly and in the heart that mateth with the doe in marriage mart of reverend wood and in the boundless seas whom river soft caressing doth appease that join in unity no time can part sweet jesus of redemption and the root incarnate for ingrate humanity thou knowest how two hearts may one heart be hast seen the law and hast proclaimed it good 
How man was made a weakling, how there stood at his right side a woman tenderly, and how the twain in lasting sanctity become a perfect one of soul and blood. Thou good gentle ghost, soft mother of the creed, that spakest unto Mary's virgin ear, hast deigned unto the twelve to reappear in wisdom, where the Christ should fall and bleed. From whose cathedral breast thy children feed, thou clement God of mercy, not of fear, I speak my love to thee, and thou dost hear, more sweet, that I am twain of Adam's seed. For I have slept, and mystic breaths have blown, my soul on lotus-lightly laden feet, through vast eternities of psalming sweet, seductive to my spirit's bitter moan, that only they who travail can have known, and of eternal wisdom did I eat, standing among white seraphim complete, in heavenly chorus round thy diamond throne. Dear God, thy infinite benevolence hath covered me with blessings manifold, who knew no matter of thy sceptre's gold, but laboured in dim woeful ignorance. And thou hast filled my soul with all contents, and thou art gracious softly to unfold thy deity in her whom now I hold, in her that I might find true sustenance. Dear God, thou madest man, and in him grew the destined heart for laughter and for love, and thou hast given me, for thought above, her in whose worship love I thee anew, and there hath been no anger in thy blue, and all thy clements thou art fain to prove, and thou dost never ask, because thereof, such foreign thing no earthly man can do. Love thou the Lord, thy God with all thy might, dear God, thou gavest me to accomplish this, within the soft observance of her kiss, and all my prayer in her pure delight. In her am I with continence bedight, and my affections are not spent amiss, though love for thee can never be as is, the love I have in her I love aright. For we twain are as one, and love as one, and I who deem her high above thy thought, love thee through her, and all our love is caught in one sweet offering by each begun, yet joined in unity that's never done, and thus is thine, and thee displeaseth not. So loving thus, sometime shall we be brought to thee approved by Jesus Christ, thy Son. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Day in Arcady by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. One time, when weary work was done, I lay in twilight shadows, resting after day. It seemed I soared a wood and sailed a sea, and wandered in the fields of Arcady. Dawn With the first paling of the eastern dark, a woodbird at his matinal, and hark! A thousand voices thrill the clear refrain, in untaught harmony, then still again, they leave the woods, the cascade's gentle call, lures softly in the silences, and tall, and grim and warder-like the oak trees raise their massive arms to heaven until the maze of interlacing limbs is lost among the rifted night clouds now the light outflung before the golden glowing god of day across the distant hills is spreading grey upon the towers of night the winds from play have ceased the quiet settles like the hymns low cadence leaves when tremulous it dims and wavers unto death within the nave of lofty gothic arched vaults and save for your heart's gentle pulsing this might be a world death marked with mute serenity ah look how from the lake a mist is breathed that lies so quietly with shadows wreathed not long ago within this quiet pool we marked a lily like a jet-bound jewel and now wan in the mist the flower lies like its star sisters in the whitening skies the grey has turned to fairest blue dear love the blue to lavender and pink and gold and flaming scarlet in the east above the purple hills and one by one unfold their sails gay vagrant clouds that float along like ships upon a turquoise sea the song of glad rejoicing breaks again in free ecstatic joy from soaring birds that see the life god ere his tremulous first gleams come glinting through the trees and with quick sparks of diamond fire as brilliant as in dreams touch dewdrops pansy set then with the lark's first note heard faint from where he wheels in play 
the woodwinds waken to another day. Ah, come, love, from the scented flower-flung bowers, along the path with me, where treetops bend to make an emerald canopy, night's hours, all kiss bejeweled, must needs make an end, but you and I upon these hills may rove and see a new world born from our new love. Noon I weary of the sun, and see the trees and flowers droop languid, fainting, even the breeze is feverish and pallid, whispering low, within itself, of amber seas and slow, unbroken waves, and sodden, febrile reeds, fetid and clammy, mark the sour weeds, alone that stand still boldly, all awry, in grotesque spiked figures, the dull sky has lost its azure, fading into weak and lifeless drab. The aspen's parched leaves speak in agony and torment, and in pain from earth leap phantoms up to fall again. Even you, dear love, even you are listless, and your hair is moist and clinging, your hot hand, that yesternight was cool, and from my brow did charm away love's fiery throbbing, how, perspiring, limp, it lies within my own, as if the fever from my senses flown had settled there in your small palm. Your head rests on my shoulder still, cruel mockery, that plays fatigue for tenderness. I see, the rose I plucked for your dark hair is dead, yet lies therein all withered, frail stem bent with weariness, and oh, its heavy scent, consensuous and sickeningly sweet, dreamful like hashis with the self-same breath, enticing life though savouring of death. The dainty sandals on your tiny feet are ashen with the grey dust of the road that we have trod and as each were a load of lead you lift them so they scarcely rise grass high above the path your hazel eyes stare glassily and dull and when you close the lids they are the purple of your rose ah the pale sickly mist that dims the deep of heaven lures to swooning not to sleep cold drops of moisture on each sunken cheek and on your pallid brow stand out and speak, impassively, of your impassive breast, and soul unto unconsciousness addressed. I whisper, love, my love, and only sighs, reply, not heart warm lips, or hands, or eyes. Well, we must stop, I'll find a bower where the heat is lessened somewhat, and the air had less of death and more of life, and while the sun sinks you may sleep and wake a smile. Twilight. The heavens are silver-gray, each little star peeps shyly from the height where windways are, peeps bashfully, a moment hesitates, then dim and twinkling, friendly night awaits. How pale the moon is still that hangs so low within the east, half fearful of the glow of sunset in the radiant western sky, a maid at twilight when our love is nigh. The sun has sunken as the shadows fall, the forest birds chant day's processional. So wistful and unreal is this one light, thus artificially one stage is night, and all the woods and low hills far away are like the painted scenery of a play. All seems unreal except your lips, dear love, that cling to mine so fondly while you lie enfolded in my arms. Heaven's dusk above is not one half so tender as your eyes, where heaviness of slumber and the mist of dull fatigue or fled, your cheeks dew-kissed are cool again. Thus in my arms you spent the afternoon's long hours while slumber lent, for each from its deep store of gentle dreams, your lips a flower, your eyes these brighter gleams. See how our path awaits your pretty feet, to strew its breast with footprints wondrous sweet, and from the deeper woods the cascade's call comes luringly, where frothing waters fall, adown the rocks into the quick embrace of our fair limpid pool that yearns your face, to touch with cool caresses, ah, each drip of waters that between your fingers slip becomes an opal jewel until it gives its wonders to the lake in which it lives. The lonely woods are calling us, and yet you falter, can it be that you forget? Ah, no, each separate twilight shadow brings a separate memory that lives and sings, Within your wakening soul, a kindred chain, in that they spring from love, yet in sweet pain, and wistful joys that still unsatisfy, all different like the stars within the sky. 
and still you bear this glance this smile that leaves the thought for some sad hidden cause you grieve i take a step and you remain just so in silence dearest love do you not know do you not understand that i must pass forever farther whether dew-tipped grass betokens our fair way may never turn to follow you while yet my heart may yearn the shadows lengthen still you stand your head is bent where on the ground your rose lies dead dear love you are so dim to my fond eyes as though a chilling mist from out the skies had fallen over you in all its white and clinging folds so ghastly in the night is there no answer to my call upon the spot pale moonbeams fall and she is gone ye lonesome dreams how eagerly around from woods and shades you cluster dismally ah stand aside that i may clearer see where she has been and bless the memory's ground one time when weary work was done i lay in twilight shadows resting after day it seemed i soared a wood and sailed the sea and wandered in the fields of arcady end of poem this recording is in the public domain In Spring by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. How withered all the flowers lie, and all the gardens bleak with frost, and though tis May, the curving sky is canopied with clouds across, and there has come a bitter thing, the snow in spring. Quite like another spring it is, the spring frost ridden in my heart, the May that flowered with a kiss perhaps predestined lips apart to witness such a mournful thing the snow in spring we kissed indeed yet have we kissed of kissing though our lips were fain commingled could our souls have missed communion and the kiss be vain for there is this unheard of thing the snow in spring a month ago the sun was bright and kissed the brown earth eagerly where was the evil spring's delight that followed followed gloriously until there came this barren thing the snow in spring ah well perhaps tis nature's blame this frosted may these bare stems bent with withered flowers her flowers the same and i who try to be content with even such a bitter thing as snow in spring End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mystic Woman by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Mystic Woman She came all clothed with mystery, Deep in the darksome night, When wakefulness had victory, And sleep had taken flight she came and sang a song to me of love and crimson lips to be my own through all eternity then vanished from my sight and when the day had followed dawn and i arose from sleep though far the vision fair had gone her image lingered deep engraven on my mind yet drawn with blurring colors thereupon the sunset flush along the lawn the sunrise on the deep and finally i tried in stone to fashion such a shape as might recall the mystic one in all her misty drape then when i finished all alone i viewed the figure carved of stone and saw my inspiration flown and yet i stood agape i placed it where all men might see and they were mute in thought and wondered what the form might be and knew yet knew not and so they came and questioned me but i knew not my memory just told me that it was not she and yet was she i sought for somewhere in her placid face and in her comely head i saw a slight resemblance trace the scarlet in rose red and as i scanned her frozen grace her lifeless marble staring face i shuddered and i quit the place she seemed so weirdly dead and a poem this recording is in the public domain
Reflections by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Reflections Well, she is dead now, better so, than to have seen more weary years come full of promise that would go and leave her only bitter tears. They laughed when first she came to me, t'was winter, I remember well, the wild, wind-driven night. And she is dead now, and has gone to hell. So they would say, but scarcely, they could know her as I did. I knew the soul that struggled, one fair day from ashes, and was born anew. And so I took her. Oh, the time was short. Her cheeks had grown so red, her smile so womanly sublime. And yet, tis better she is dead. I never saw a spring so rare as this one dawned, and now tis fall. The perfume of the mild May air within a night is autumn's gall. They laughed at me, too. Well, I see why they all laughed, nor do I blame a one for laughing. Were I he, I would myself have done the same. They could not understand that I came last and was the first to come. Love sang so sweetly in her sigh, for me and for the rest was dumb. Thank God she never saw this sneer through every smile. She loved them all. I told her, so she banished fear. She lived to come when I would call. Tis better that she lie there dead. It might have happened in a day. And God was only kind instead to take her and the child away. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Darkness by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Within dim shadows, so it seems, I lived my childhood life of dreams, and then a moment, searing beams of light, and when the warmth hath gone. This darkness, distant sobbing streams, A quicksand that I walk upon, This chill, out-agonizing dawn, When dismal birds chirp on the lawn. Late in the morning, still abed, I lie a-wearied, and my head Is filled with dreams that I were dead, And then indeed I live, for I Pretend that God, whom they have said is good, Has set a corner by somewhere, Where I can rest, and sigh, alone, and no one comes to buy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Living by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. I dreamed you died, and weeping all alone, I roamed the wilderness, God to atone, stilled woodland rills and bade the swallows cease their carefree singing, yet I knew not peace. I dreamed you lived together, hand in hand, we took our way, and God gave kind command, that nature smile upon her joy and sent a singing days, yet I was not content. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dream Island by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Far on a turquoise unknown sea, an island lightly lies, and there, wherever the palms may be, a wandering zephyr sighs, and blossoms bedeck each verdant tree, all under the smiling skies. There, waves rush high on the warm white sands, at play with the gay sunbeams. A leap at the touch of their fairy hands, Till the murmuring sea all seems Like the golden sparkling lakes of the lands We visit at night in dreams. And there, when dims the gathering night, The moon on silent wings, That have for feathers filmy light, The stars and quiet brings. Till the stars are spread in the wistful height, And the wind in the roses sings. Ah, I would that the days were not so long, that I alone could be where the waves are singing their sleepy song to the island on the sea, 
where love is right and a kiss no wrong, alone save only thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Despair by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Dishevelled scavenger of destiny, with slender maiden hands in place of claws, whose gibbous flight above humanity precedes the sudden swoop when pain withdraws. Red-eyed, my coward bird of carrion, you follow fortune, but who strikes for lust of blood, and slow you end what is begun, the ceaseless rendering of dust to dust. My heart has been your banquet, I have felt your vulture grasp upon my forehead, grey and cold beneath the blow that fortune dealt. And, oh, your hands were soft as if to say, Rest, while you plied your beak voraciously. Ghoul, with your pinions beating to a sigh, Go to cheat others as you cheated me, Of all peace fortune leaves us, ere we die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Judas Soul by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org, by phone. Love, love of all my heart, upon your face, I struck you once with febrile words and sound, And once I cast a blossom on the ground, Though of its fragrance had I no distaste. Once in a mood tempestuous I placed My god on ashes, gathered there around, Loud laughing men and women, boldly gowned, Of Satan, then did I my God disgrace. Sometimes I think that Judas, who within the sleeping garden of Gethsemane, did hang himself, remorseful of his sin, unto an olive bough, has given me his spirit, so I breathe in every breath sure anamnesis of that Judas' death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Three Dreams by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Three Dreams I slept and dreamed of day, And lo, mine ear caught distant numbers That I strove to hear until I woke, Aghast, for it was fear. And then once more I slept, and lo, Again with chastened shades of twilight, Came a strain, ah, wildly wistful. Thus I welcomed pain. I wept. The moon came, guiding from above, Blind, gentle night. And as a soft voice dove, Came one who sang to me. And it was love. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Three Women by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I saw three women in a winter's day, and one had golden hair and eyes of blue. Her breath came shuddering from the death that lay within her bosom fair, and chilled me through. And one had raven tresses, and her face was ghostly white. Her eyes were large with pain. Her mournful hand she drew with clinging grace along my brow. My sighs were sorrow's gain. And one soft hair was ashen gray and fell, a veil about my head, to hide our kiss. Ah! For cold golden hair I labor well, With raven tresses wed, And love with this. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anima May by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The chapel where I kneel is very small and silent. I can reach from wall to wall 
with arms outstretched the arching dome is high and dim so it might touch the evening sky there is a little altar bare and white where burns a taper with so faint a light that it but kisses darkness into dusk i kneel alone and breathe the taper's musk sometimes when i would dream the tiny blaze so low will flicker i can scarcely raise through my wild terror strength to pray for then it burns quite fair and brilliantly again so lonely there it is and yet i feel no loneliness but watch alone and kneel until i hear the silver tinkling call of bells and then the master in the hall end of poem this recording is in the public domain serenade by leonard klein read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c you spoke quite low yet i heard i plain who longed to hear the night was purple on the swaying grain the shadows mocked the marble rose wreathed fain and there was fear yet jungle phantoms wailed in vain for i am here see love lies quavering in the tune of my sitar love pants beneath the lovelorn fading moon love lingers in the languorous soft croon where brooklets are the stars are pale ah love come soon to take thy star end of poem this recording is in the public domain Preludes by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 1. She and I planted our rose gardens side by side, tended them, waiting blue heavens and winds of the south. She and I dreamed in the dusk what in spring would be tied. Ah, the lost rose of her mouth! what matter then if our gardens were barren of flowers we who had tended our roses in winter and spring roam in the wonder world garden defiant of ours love we possess like the perfume of roses unborn and the swallow awning two the clouds came up and hid the russet moon and hid the little stars and all the sky and you were dim and vague and far only the blind streams croon darkness a sense of wild storm freedom nigh and one bright star i dreamed a little so my sightless eyes rested a while upon that point of light soul signs of heaven and of silent blue in all the tapestried skies once we had loved to wander there at night i made the star seem you o oh, bitter change clouds came between the star and me when i had thought a while swift i arose returning home pondered what i had seen prayed as in ages i had not on bended knee star bright and all the heaven clouded shrouded the last pale star love wanes when heavens close end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnets by leonard klein Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 1. 
trembling your lips met mine and we were one night drew dim silence round about us there ah love i heard time's whisper in the air and saw stars die and saw star life begun then the faint strain the pulsing notes that run an alien octave of disguised despair your lips drew back your soul sped up the stair of song our kiss time's unity were done ah had the voice but stilled for then i heard the threnody my harms fell you were free you listened followed gave no parting word i turned and darkness covered you from me years filled with song i know songs every breath who would live love not who would love kiss death two they laughed and so i laughed and went my way among them sought full lips that curved in sneers beneath my kiss that formed unsounded jeers in answer to my simple query day i gave to life and in the night may gay buying narcotic tenderness that tears were still born in my heart no time for fears my soul slept seeing not the dawning gray and then and then i found you in the spring and saw you smile enchanted let your voice wake echoes in my heart when you would sing the soul song till i had no other choice except to see the thing and at your knee bend penitent and humble devotee three midnight and life through all the wood a thrill the little hidden forest folk that make their mystic noises in the purpled break the winds that wandered with the wandering rill and then your voice so all the wood grows still at once and hush beneath the hazy moon with listening that each note of the sweet tune throb heart deep and the darkness have its fill would you have sung forever there for when your faint voice wavered to an incensed death among the woodland flowers the winds again might wake and all the world draw wistful breath but i ah i must wait disturbed and dumb till filling all the world with song you come four love me with the love that knows no fear the love that laughs at temporary things whisper the soft words that i long to hear from your dear lips and in my heart make sing a sweeter happiness than ever night dream pinioned wistful night may wing to me and in your eyes all mellowed with the light that knows no reckoning may my eyes see my love triumphant and in your warm breath soul heated in your sacred secret heart eternal evidence of faith that death may sanctify nor ever tear apart love me and distant stars nor ancient seas shall last my love's eternity louise five i stood before you once safe mantled round with bold pretensions bidding for your love yet before yours my own eyes sought the ground you left me then but drawing from above this wild determination in my hand i grasped the mantle of my hidden shame and flung it from me look again i stand 
quivering in the wind of common blame my soul stripped naked frail without relief from countless curious eyes that strive to see and seeing understanding not my grief are turned forevermore away from me but you ah you must understand somehow then leave me if you must but love me now six lost in the vast bewilderment of space you found me bounded my infinity with slender arms of living ivory gave me to see my sunshine in your face gave me to be my heaven stars the grace reluctant in your sighs consinity eyes for a dreaming dusk you yielded me and lips to glow beneath my own lips praise now is that better sweet probation done and through the ether's azure washed mirror of countless leagues where angel pinions stir symphonic interlude my soul has won love's one reward and i have cast aside the stained cloak of years to clasp my bride end of poem this recording is in the public domain on a picture by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c her eyes are like twin pools of silent waters within a forest hedged by cypress trees at night when all the tempests and the heat the white tumultuous heat of the day are over when night has brought her coolness and her shade and the fair little moon that climbs the heavens reflected in twin images upon the placid surface of the jetty pools and so the depths are hidden only one may look upon them note the wavering moon and all the stars of heaven there yet guess the sombre fathoms where move sinister tides beneath the perfect calm and oh the calm of those still eyes is like a thought of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain my heart's song by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c once i heard my own heart's song languorous when the dusk was long who would keep a withered rose when the flower is richly red yes but when the rose is dead who would hoard heart-warming wine in the cup of graven gold leave it till it's sour and cold now the crimson blossom blows now the goblet sweet is thine look the fragrant petals close and autumn's on the vine so i heard my heart and long pondered on the pulsing song end of poem this recording is in the public domain roses by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org by phone i kissed you once and in my barren heart roses sprang up from other flowers apart roses that grew and filled this heart of mine ah was there not some kindred flower in thine i whispered once my love and in your eyes i proved the purple deepness of the skies fountains sprang up within this heart of mine ah was there not some kindred spring in thine your voice far sweeter than the heavy scent of perfume from slow swaying censers lent itself unto the darkness and my prayer 
You sang of God, and it seemed God was there. You sang of God, whose sanctuary light Gleamed radiant through the all-enfolding night Wherein I knelt. I prayed to God, tis true, But worshipped, ah, I worshipped only you. See, love, the very trees are bowing low, in your sweet presence, reverence to show to one whom every woodland flower or clod of lowly fern must think their forest god. And all these little beams that play about your hair and eyes and dimples luring rout, ah, they but wonder with the world and me why God created sun and skies and sea. One time in our fair youth I wandered far with you, beloved, and for me no star gleamed other than your scintillant sweet eyes that led me through an earthly paradise. In silence now and eagerness I wait for your glad coming at the fast-closed gate that love shall open, guiding you and me into the farther heaven's eternity. There was a night of nights when in my arms I held you and your darkness born alarms I stilled with whispered words. Ah, fair the night, and you, my goddess, I, your acolyte. And now the moon that roams the misty sky, and winds of night that look for you and sigh, that you were gone, still whisper low to me, You are my goddess, I, your devotee. My love and I in the starlight, and the world all eerie fair, the crickets calling softly in the thickets everywhere, the haloed moon that's bringing benediction to the sight, and the wordless sweet awakening to the love that's ours tonight. Ah, the little stars have hid them, where my eyes may never see, and the moon has fled and taken all my happiness from me, and the crickets chirp a welcome to grey rain clouds in the sky, for my love is but a memory, its awakening, but a sigh. So long as there is dusk that we may dream, so long as suns may rise or moons may beam, so long as there is life and after life, while heaven is, shall we be man and wife. There is no thought that we may think apart, no dream but what we dream within one heart. Our love, our happiness, we have as one, no thee or me, for us has life begun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org by phone. One. In the silent winter, weary of the snow, we have longed for springtime when the roses grow. In the smiling springtime, rosebuds in the bower brought us dreams of summer and the scarlet flower. In the panting summer, lo, our roses died, so we wept and parted, so our hearts had lied. 2. The bees are humming, drowsy, in the springtime of the day, where a host of wide-eyed daisies lie along the pasture way, and my heart is with the brooklets that melodiously run, in the glory of your presence, like the glory of the sun. And at night, when elfin moonbeams dance among the swaying trees, with a tremulous abandon to the singing of the breeze, ah, my heart is with the brooklets, sighing low with sweet delight, in the wonder of your presence, like the wonder of the night. 3. You were my dream the other night, and oh, I dreamed of spring, and watched the swallow's eager flight, and heard a brooklet sing. But when I wakened all alone, the clouds were grey and low, and all the little birds had flown away before the snow. Ah, would my weary eyes might close, again a dreaming space, to open on the budding rose and sunshine of your face. 4. There is a winding road, they say, that leads the heart to Mandalay, to Mandalay and roses gay, and oh, the sunlit sea. And so I search the world around for jasmine and the golden ground of Mandalay, but every day set vain and dismally. 
But oh, the world's a wondrous thing, for when the larks were first awing, I saw at play a winsome maid who stopped and looked at me. I shook her hand and kissed her lips, and kissed her little fingertips, And soared away to Mandalay, a gleam upon the sea. And now I sing my idle song of Mandalay the whole day long, Of Mandalay in roses gay, and oh, the sunlit sea, for does the sun begin to set, I start again, I can't forget, And kiss her lips and fingertips, And she, she kisses me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Miracle by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by phone Lord God, whose all-creating hand, in flowing stream and restless sea, and blossom-spattered meadowland, and every flower and every tree, and in each secret human breast, and even in thy heaven's blue, has made so harshly manifest thy miracle of two and two. Lord God, is this thy pleasure, then, to make a jest of all we deem is virtuous and best in men, must heaven scowl for every gleam of sunlight, must this very thought, inevitable, seeming true, be sacrilege, for thou hast wrought the miracle of two and two. What mortal is there ignorant of danger under ocean's peace, and all thy multitudes descant of fortune's whim and sun's caprice, and we who have been taught to mourn thy calvary, must we construe thy justice in this crown of thorn, this miracle of two and two. For one man has a heart to love, and loving slays a maiden's soul, and one whose eyes still gaze above at thee has vice his destined goal, and one's transcending vision saw the beauteous, yet he failed to do his work of beauty through thy law, the miracle of two and two. And one whose virtue rivals thine, when thou wast man, is miserly, and one who worships at thy shrine is chained to hypocrisy, and there be those whose will is worth all worldly comfort, yet who rue the day that they were born on earth, thy miracle of two and two. Must all whose lives are pure and fair to thy desire be called to kiss, a dreamer fail before despair, a lover battle cowardice? Can virtue never stand alone, be vice inevitably due? I tremble at thy judgment throne, thy miracle of two and two. Conceived in thy most happy mood, I see all gloriously rise, that liberty by mortals wooed, who watched the wonder of her eyes, nor knew the dagger of her breast they clasped until it pierced them through. Lord God, does paradise suggest this miracle of two and two? And all the better thought of man, through weary ages hoarded till we live in wonder greater than the wonder of the human will with this our pomp and luxury in like degree does shame ensue and whoso stops to look must see thy miracle of two and two so do the lines of good and bad progress in constant symmetry and i whose heart has never had a dearer aim than love of thee can draw no image of thy face However soft the lines and true, Save cynicism thereon trace, Thy miracle of two and two. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. You Sold by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org By Nemo You Sold You Sold sits in bowers green among the panting roses, and in her hair of golden sheen, a poppy's bud reposes. Yet often when the days are long, and sun his might surpasses, Ysold sings a piteous song of brooks and dewy grasses. Ysold sits and sings a song of once and of a maytime, and of a night and of a wrong. All this is in the daytime. For when the moon is bright and beams and roses cast a shadow, Ysold's tune is turned to dreams of daisies in a meadow. Ysold's roses mock the Christ, the poor white Christ of sorrow. 
with thorny branches interspliced across his shape to borrow his soul's poppy seems a coal of fire as if to fashion the crimson scar upon her soul the judas kiss of passion end a poem this recording is in the public domain an old man's tale by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. An Old Man's Tale I heard an old man draw his withered bow over four sagging strings to sound a song one night, and as the sad notes sped along my heart, I asked him how the words might go. All evilly, he answered me, and slow. Once have I known them with a febrile throng, the tune is fair, but ah, the words are wrong. Wondering, said I then, I too must know. And therewithal I wandered many years, singing of roses where the rose was not, singing at last of briars through my tears, until the tears had dried and I forgot, only that now I stand as he before, playing a song whose words I know no more. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Night Night in the city has a sneaking pace And comes when all's illumined after dark When all men sleep and all the streets lie stark like peace upon a painted woman's face. Nor strolling watchmen in the marketplace, nor brothel brood in each sequestered park, supine insatiation fail to mark the death that broods with trumpet and with mace. This is the city's horrid hour of night, when man hunts after man, and crime is great, and each awakening sweats cold with fright. Hearts scream, though lips are inarticulate man has night's terror through the primal plan of human passion lusting after man end a poem this recording is in the public domain realization by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org by nemo realization Pale hands upraised against a leprous sky That floated lavender here and was fair. Black hands against a dead god's cheek, For I have watched and waited in moon-silvered air. Red hands of blood, I saw from where I lay You falter, and your life incarnadine, The mantle's white hem of a virgin day, And felt the stab and spurt, and knew you mine. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Grey Ghost by Leonard Klein. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Old Grey Ghost. An old grey ghost came into my house and wept in an afternoon when the stealthy night ghost slept. The gray day dimmed tonight as her eyes light dimmed, and her eyes all watery and blister rimmed, and the old gray ghost's gray hand at her shriveled throat shook like the peak of a sail on a storm worn boat, in a gray, despairing sea, and the ragged crest of a matted shawl hung over her sagging breast. You have chosen, she said, you are wise, ho ho, you are fools. For the sin of life is a law untaught in schools, and a kiss is a coal of fire for a fiend's delight, and the day laughs wild, and the night sighs unto night. You have chosen, she laughed. Go to, you have yielded up to the lure of a poisoned wine and a broken cup. You have given a hope and a strength. You are all gone mad, for a belly full to the end that you might be sad. You have chosen, she cried. You are fools where you might be sane, and a specious wisdom of pins for an empty gain. 
and oh but you shall believe when the life-blood dries in the truth of the truth that i see with my blistered eyes and the old ghost shook with the rage of her merriment seeing me grapple with fear and with discontent till i said with the lips of my love you are wise you have wept o oh, lying fool we have chosen and shall accept end a poem this recording is in the public domain the laugh by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. The Laugh I think it was the laugh, that second laugh of his, when he had ceased and all was still, that laugh that came so suddenly and strange it seemed to strike a sleeping something harsh within me. So I dropped the heavy glass and all the warm good wine was red upon my clothes. And then I laughed again, and May and he the blond one they laughed once more too funny to laugh at that the good red wine but i had taken just too much i guess enough to make the laughter so i came up to my room alone at last and thought and then somehow i looked around and found this picture well it does seem queer so long i've gone without this till i quite forgot about it surely years have passed since last i got it out or no i had it out upon my dresser there where the first the sun would strike it in the morning that was when the mornings used to find me open-eyed awaiting them and listening to the birds chirping so questioningly and the carts bound for the markets rumbling through the streets and finally i'd rise three hours or more before the slumber passes from my eyes so heavily these mornings so i'd go shivering in the cold for dawns are cold quick to the dresser there and look a bit on this and then i'd dress and when all dressed i'd look at it again it's yellow now around the edges yellow too about the face i used to kiss it there i think i wish it were in colors then i'd see the tint of the blonde hair the very blue i used to dream was heaven when i lay within the love world of his arms the pink of the soft cheek so silken like a girl's even the tie i used to know his ties quite well and when he'd have a new one i would criticize and then he never wore the tie unless i liked it ha ha damn i've laughed so much of late not half the time knowing the reason even for the laugh end a poem this recording is in the public domain the madman by leonard klein read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a madman lies within my heart and laughs aloud with glee to hear so impotently call god's legate my heart's sin shall do sailors still the sea o oh, heaven pity me a madman walks within my heart monotonously grim though softly on her bended knee a little lady makes her plea the world is wild and dim o oh, heaven plead with him a madman races round my heart and cracks his thumbs and leaps he sings a weirdly tuneless tune the earth's a swirl the vault's jejune and as he sings and as he leaps my writhing body deathward creeps end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Wind Blew Over the Earth by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A wind blew over the earth. It kissed a soft-eyed maiden in its flight. It kissed her breast her virgin breast 
who smiled and sang for oh her heart was light to greet so fair a guest and then because a wind is but a wind sped onward it met a man sore wearied with the heat the white-hot skies the ruthless skies it blew the dust that burned his aching feet into his smarting eyes and then because a wind is but a wind sped onward it swept a pool such as the lily knows the lily died the willows died and yet the fragrant jasmine and the rose sprang up where it had sighed a wind blew over the earth and god looked wondering on its path of death saying i breathed and they have cursed my breath end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mother of the trade by leonard klein read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c she basks in every public street in every market place amid the traffic rush and heat she flaunts a foul disgrace up from the hell brood round her feet she lifts her loathsome face laugh agony is one she hugs another bitter care grim twins the clamor at her dugs to suck the vileness there her matted hair is rank with sugs her stench is everywhere she takes no notice of the din but often lifts her head to listen stopping silent in her carnival of dread another body one for sin a soul to torment led and there be some who give no heed but keep within the shade of cool convention walks that led forever past the jade with her twin filthy screeching breed the mother of the trade end of poem this recording is in the public domain Rosetti by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Thou gravest to the earth the pregnant seed of thy fair flowers within a night of peace, heaven's breath of life by angels down the grace of moonlit born with moisture in their need, Father. It is their tilling that hath freed the blossom from the bud and given release to fragrance that increases as increase the flowers which yearly grow more fair indeed. And now dawn breaks above thy garden place, which once was only barren ground, and shows thy violence and pauses on the face of this thy lily and of this thy rose thy dawn thy day a year of centuries mellifluent with this and this and these end of poem this recording is in the public domain madrigal by leonard klein Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. So it be thou and I, I care not love. Winds may be wild and ravish mortal flowers. Winds may be sweet and earthly bowers, radiant for our feet. So it be thou and I, I care not love so it be thou and i who roam the world ah but the world is fair what wind there passes each day a rose mong lisping grasses crimsoning for us blows so it be thou and i who roam the world end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Peace by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Let us dream a moment, love. There, your head upon my breast. Now the sobbing passions o'er, now the little moon above. Again is quiet as before. Let us dream and rest. How the heavens swayed and swirled. Love, a gentle little kiss. In the sweet of our delight, how our hearts were wild and whirled. Away with us, a swooning flight. Now there's peace and this love our lips were pale with fire now the fires no longer leap but this little fragrant flame at the shrine of our desire eternally shall burn the same close to me and sleep end of home this recording is in the public domain The Hour by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I roamed a million ages in that hour, Or two, along the dim ways of the wood. Sometimes oppressive, sultry clouds would lower, Black fear, where sometimes on each radiant flower, Hope's sunshine spoke of good. I felt a million ages when I thought of hell's white fire, a momentary pang, stretched through eternity from Hades brought in heaven's cause, while yet my mind knew not, while all the wood birds sang. And when the tears came, then I drooped and fell, and sobbing, waited till fair dawn began. At midday, came a voice as from a well of peace with silence shadowed quick to tell of you and this our son end of poem this recording is in the public domain mood by leonard klein read for LibriVox.org by linda ray nielsen vancouver b c god's heaven is militant in panoply of cloud drawn grayly over festive blue that no light though upflung may enter through and mankind scowleth in due mimicry through galleries of time my reverie soft-footed doth its silent flight pursue from drabbed obnubilation life askew to rest in thy forbidden sympathy and sometime i shall meet thy sorrowed eyes hegesis high warden of despair and sometime drain thy draught to realize love's failure and thy fixed media stare of wisdom of the perjury that lies beneath a world i wronged by deeming fair ah but the skies are joyous in the spring from dawn to dusk exuberantly blue white tufted oftentimes with clouds that do but wanton in heaven's zephyred marrying that for my eyes my heart's gone pilfering time's rarest dainties cherished ages through with phyllis what's to harm if she's untrue here's phoebe with a heart a passioning come up old ribald erispasus dance fulfillment of thy sweet philosophy here's wine the best that friars tope in france that bacchus were a famished but to see stub toes and frolic scribbling is a sin when spring seduces life we scribble in end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Impressions by Leonard Klein Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 1. Dusk The park is mauve, deserted, round about. Impassive lantern eyes peer vaguely out, Beneath tall trees within whose pensive leaves The winds are gathered in odd, waiting rout. The church bells tolls and grieves. Where sun has sunken, there do heavens bleed, Life spreading crimson, higher atrophied. In night's embrace, and first a star is seen, but where their soft amours vermilion breed, the waiting moon hangs green. And then just when the little men appear from slammed irrelevant doors in whistling cheer, of hunger satisfied, the city's light at every corner in accord snaps clear, so it at last is night. 2. Night Along a sanded alley has tent Between vast hemlock and distorted plant Slow from the corner wavers lantern light To where the fountain terrorized a plant Points to the infinite A silent limousine illuminated goes Along the pavement languidly morose and there a woman startled at the toll of sudden midnight laughs and draws gay clothes about a flesh-bound soul beside the fountain's frantic pale dismay in sleep harassed by shattered nerves affray affrighted by the bat that round him flits his dollar hoarded toward his mind's decay the lotus eater sits three virgin day the last step stilled of swift latent night sunrise a thought death permeates the light grown cold where not one paved zephyr blows with its ascetic unemotional white rebukes the scarlet rose squat chimneys drift dim and green wisps of smoke upon partuant heavens that provoke the city's throats to hideous screech of glee lackluster men each shivering in his cloak in groups pass listlessly a ragged urchin hands in pockets thrust beside the bench discovers in the dust a cigarette discarded by its slave among the aged hemlocks sighs a gust prophetic of a grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain malise by Leonard Klein, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Where do you go in your golden tyreme? At the will of the anguine breeze. What is your song to the suns that gleam over in orate seas? Who now is the prince of a red regime? for a moment uplifted untrammeled supreme in the green of your glances that glow in the dream languidly malise you have given your fragrance of roses in dew and of lotus and amber grease from fairy flung tresses of black you undo for the prudent one's caprice have you never a thought that the wind is untrue look down at the waves that are nevermore blue 
they are yellow with shadows of shipwreck and rue and a bitterness malise sit your soft in your bower of poppy and myrrh dream anew with each fevered breath give your fattiest sails to the breezes that stir on the gaping sea white with despair like a lion of lust that you fondle to purr with your lecherous hands in its hair what will you do when its tempest occur dream of love in your bower of poppy and myrrh dream anew with each fevered breath malise it is death end of poem this recording is in the public domain worms by leonard klein read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c great god we pray thee for thy mercy's grace be blind nor let thy earthward gaze begin to touch mankind but rest above our din on joyous feathered cloisters that trace melodious celestial azure ways lest chaos be conceived again within thy perlustration of the wrinkled sin upon the earth's obese sardonic face where each man's constituted deity to censor deeds he does by others done proclaims the curse with mocking sherried lips salacious counsels callous chastity and hypocrite reformers one by one blasphemy the name of thy apocalypse end of poem this recording is in the public domain the death of hegesis by leonard klein Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Whose philosophy was sternly repressed as inducive to suicide? Give Socrates due thanks. His wisdom might hath furnished seolist a vague delight, hath filled slow contemplation's goblet full with seeming happiness attainable give him due meed of praise but clearer mind must hesitate at phrases thus designed for lesser intellect must candidly occlude thyself give open eye to see how life with sorrow is part you reint how meditation's moorbound intent doth vanish at a song from loved lip and charles latin's abstraction piece doth slip unhindered at the fascinating caress of star-eyed venus reason must confess a tardy rapacence when assailed with life and not what life should be but failed good citizens here's no derision meant i only seek the full establishment of resignation to this life's caprice wherein no questing mortal may have peace life's but an hollow infinite of woe that man doth enter look upon and so once more become immortal being dust injustice is the guardian of the just repining recompense of venery sharp thorned the laurel wreath of chastity no less the jasmine of concup sense and wealth there be some leaving going hence from undesired truth to hoarded wealth and reverie be like to shameless stealth is do their gold accumulations sweet do ye conceive their prospering complete 
who live in fear of kindred robber's knife good citizens they've anguishing to wife stay murmurings were never enemies hagasis and erring socrates alike we do life's promises disdain deem life a laugh a grievous life insane deem life a weeping inconsiderate but i say life dry-eyed is desperate where am i in the darkness and alone and prostrate on this whirling floor of stone mid pillar arms stupendous vanishing up where for heaven's stars are gathering in shadows why i thought at syracuse i daunted parvamity's abuse upon the portico in zeno's place and here i lie deserted cold and numb and shudder when my scattered senses come again with memory of the last disgrace how prating sophist did exurbate a laughing populace to witless hate how i was silenced and was banished with beggars casting carrion on my head with mocking escort in impassioned rout how athens sneering athens cast me out i thirst i almost thought tis water near that winnowing of vampire wings that veer and swerve in sickening circles like the skies a little water for a man who dies alone forgotten by lice polygot of little friends great zeus but i forgot that's happiness and happiness is not i know this little place i wandered to in my delirium and mortal rue the little temple white among the trees that swirl as though there really were a breeze and here's an old disgruntled goddess left like poor hegesis who is bereft of all a man calls good and now of breath she starved for worship i for meat to death i've wandered here before and knew my way with palin useful then as young the day and that was when i trembled hesitant at truth's dark door the woods were palpitant with vernal life and wood birds passing love and hemlocks green was azure swept above then suddenly we left the pleasant shade and came unwitting to this silent glade and silent ivied temple roses grew about its pillars bees sped humming through assembling in its inmost honeyed fane their murmuring seemed praises told again by low-voiced devotee the rose perfume awakened ancient incense in the room long time we rested there between us past grave thought on this and that until at last came twilight and we rose and said good-bye for he returned to athens thence and i to corneth there of my discovery i spoke at length and hundreds welcomed me and listened for a week and then did frown insulted me and drove me from their town that was the first and on its heels i heard how deeply my despair had palin stirred until he drained his death in poisoned wine palin the gall of calumny is mine thou hast avoided by being brave and seeking unremembrance in the grave would god my one disciple and my friend could be with me with sympathy attend my death 
could bring a draught and hold my hand and listen to me speak and understand that would be little peace but i forgot i live and living happiness is not just such a night it was serenely dark when last at antoch i disembarked an outcast from this world of merriment to supplicate some measure of content beside my father's hearth and on the ways i traversed travellers would group and gaze upon me pointing cursing whispering heard rumours of the abdominal thing that caused my just disfame the vile disgrace i came to flaunt in antoch's pure face and all the lads i played with carelessly in youth matured refused to welcome me and passed me by with haughty calloused eyes and cloaked my grief in impudence guise and when at last i ventured to approach my father's house forewarned that i had come by gossip throat to vilify his home he greeted me with censure and reproach and all the neighbors friends of mine and more i knew not watched him drive me from his door and seizing stick and stone pursued my flight from antoch into the impotent night had he received me though the world should not but that were happiness and i forgot just such another night serenely still and in a garden incomparable at antoch's gateway once i strayed along and breathed the sweet of aphrodite's song a many years have dragged in anguished path throughout the world and still my memory doth hold the dream and in its sorrow hath above all sorrow life hath granted me i see her eyes again burn breathlessly and take the inaurate tresses richly massed upon her head and hold them to my face and kiss them first the kiss that was my last we sat within a little fragrant place where swaying cypress cast its purpled shade on grasses sensuously interlaid beneath us for a matting so her hand i took and spoke my love and made demand in gentle choking whispered interlude between soft sighs and pauses understood she loved me found ineffable the thought and told the love in kisses i had sought and all life stayed until dissevered our kiss and dawn looked slowly from the east whose mogul might go hungry for my feast and in a week they told me she was dead they told me how my only love was dead had she but lived then i should have remained at antoch and buried her and gained what careless men considered good repute and left the world to socrates astute great zeus had she but lived i should have died her kiss upon my lips and death defied and on the stone they would have carven in hegesis a good man hath he been and antoch should never so defame and throw aspersion on my guiltless name but wherefore cometh this pale reverie for that were happiness and cannot be a star fell then one little star of white that streaked its way across the heavens peace and now tis gone and all its brothers please 
to swirl in undiminished wild delight to have i fallen and my quick demise will leave no tear in disapproving eyes will leave no record on man's firmament i wonder did the little star dissent in some vague question of eternity and did its brothers damn it utterly perchance it said why laugh approaching day must cover pleasance with a pale dismay our thoughtless laugh cannot amorulate the destined evil of our starry fate will yield us for the end without repair we suffer wild regret and grim despair perchance they answered they of banal friend we laugh in night day cometh not again and then perchance they turn their ingrate ire upon the hapless star that caused them doubt and so i saw the momentary fire of its departure when they cast it out ah well while man's a man twill be the same and ignominies do and cold disfame to whomsoever draws the cerement of truth upon man's vices and content and it were highest folly to incline an ear for laughter to haggis's wine for swear his strumpet's clever kiss invoke restraint and clear dissatisfaction's yoke forget a maudlin goblet as i taught and ever sent pleasure set as naught for it were happiness were mankind wise possessing ears to hear and seeing eyes sure death is good and this fit place to die alone we two the goddess there and i and quiet all the bees have sought their hive and death herein is all that is alive and yet i have a terror of the night and death that waits and is not expedite ah would i were in athens once again surround by my enemies but men in oblique meet object of the rude inclement anger of the multitude a target for their enmity at length impavid victim of the coward's strength that would be happiness but i forgot i die in horror happiness is not End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.